I'm Paul Mason, and this is the Cosmic Distance Ladder. And distance in astronomy is difficult at best to determine. And the idea of the Cosmic Distance Ladder uses the analogy of a ladder in two ways. First of all, we have to build our way up from short distances nearby to more distant distances further away, just as you have to climb a ladder going rung by rung. But also, uh, importantly, the uh, ability to get up the ladder depends on how well you can navigate the first steps. So, the, uh, if we can't figure out, for instance, the distances in the inner solar system, or we can't figure out the astronomical unit and how far that is, we are not going to be able to get very far in this uh, process. So, um, we will look at radar distances in the inner solar system, parallax distances to nearby parts of the Milky Way, spectroscopic parallax distances within the Milky Way, Cepheids within the Milky Way and nearby galaxies, and standard candles, type 1 supernovae. There are many different kinds of super, uh, standard candles, uh, but we'll talk about type 1a supernovae and uh, Hubble's Law eight, for galaxies in the distant universe. So, first of all, we look at the nearby uh, things, for instance, the moon. And late uh, lunar radar ranging can be used. Here is an observatory that's doing that. This is made possible by astronauts that literally put a mirror on the moon and uh, this reflects laser beams and um, uh, uh, probably radio waves that are uh, sent to that mirror and then uh, bounces off the moon and then is returned. And the key is measuring the time. So when the beam and the signal is sent, you measure how long it takes to get to the moon and back very precisely. The speed of light is known very precisely and therefore the distance can be known very, very precisely as well. And we know the distance to the moon in uh, to literally centimeters or inches. And one of the discoveries, in fact, is that the moon is very slowly moving away from us, very slowly and over time, uh, and this is also causing the Earth to slow down its rotation. So a major discovery just from that high precision measurement of the distance to the moon. The astronomical unit is something we'd like to know, and that is how far the Earth is to the Sun. This is from the Earth to the Sun on average. That's the astronomical unit. And uh, we can't do this. We can't send a radar beam to the Sun and bounce off. But by using geometry and using other the planets, we can do that. And there's various ways. One way, it's a very rare phenomenon, and that is the transit of Venus. If we look at this diagram, if uh, this is a, a, a parallax situation, if you have one viewpoint and you look at some object, it will appear against the blue background, where from the other viewpoint, it will appear against the red background. Well, if we have a transit of Venus, Venus moves in front of the sun, it's like an eclipse, but Venus can't eclipse the sun. And it's seen from two different locations on Earth, two different viewpoints on Earth, say on uh, one side of the Earth in, uh, and then the other side of the Earth, then there will be a difference in position, which can be determined really by the timing of the event. And this has been done and was done uh, to measure the astronomical unit. Now, once the astronomical unit is known, this is very important. We, knowing the astronomical unit is critical in the cosmic distance scale. The astronomical unit is a fundamental piece. 
It, once we know that, we can use the orbit of the Earth orbiting around this is stellar, stellar parallax. The uh, six months apart, the Earth is in two different positions, and the, a nearby star can be seen to shift compared to far away stars. Or just to think of it is, it shifts in its position, and the further away uh, it is, the smaller it will shift. The closer by, the larger. So by measuring how much that shift takes place, the distance to the star can be determined. And this is the only direct way to measure distances to stars, things out beyond our own solar system. Um, and for the, uh, uh, the Gaia satellite is, and telescope is in space, is doing this right now and has measured uh, the distance to about 1.7 billion stars. Keep in mind that's only about 1% of all the stars in the galaxy. It's the brighter ones that we can see from here that are included, but that 1% is a huge gain in what uh, was, is a very difficult process in measuring the distances by parallax. Spectroscopic parallax, well that's another method I'll briefly mention that if, for instance, we could use the position on the HR diagram uh, and the brightness of the star, the apparent brightness of the star, to say, well, if I'm comparing apples with apples, two stars that are identical virtually, they're both, say, main sequence stars, both B6 main sequence stars, but one B B6 main sequence star is 100 times fainter than another, B6 main sequence star. I could have used any spectral type here. Uh, since the, uh, it's 100 times fainter, it's going to be 10 times further away. And this is from the inverse square law that the brightness goes, drops as the square of the distance away. And so by doing this comparison, this is called spectroscopic parallax, we would have to know the distance to close the closer one by stellar parallax, regular parallax, but this is a way we can extend out even to further distances. Now, stars go through a period, especially high mass ones, when they, after they leave the main sequence in their last stages as giants and super giants, especially these ones way up here are most interesting, as could they pass through a region on the HR diagram called the instability strip. At this time, the hydrostatic equilibrium isn't operating and the star will not, will pulsate, it will not uh, remain as in a static state. And this even extends further down even into the white dwarfs where we have some pulsating white dwarfs as well. But the most interesting ones are the Cepheids, um, for at least in this context. The Cepheids are the very highest uh, range up here and the reason why uh, first of all, is that they are enormously bright, and so they can be seen a, a long, long way away. And in addition to being able to see them a long, long way away, we can measure their period. So the period is how long it takes for the star to get bright and faint, and bright and faint, over and over again. And uh, what happens is the star changes its brightness and its color. When it is small, here it is also very hot because it is smaller and it is much brighter. And when it is a little bit larger, it is cooler and it is faint uh, because it's cooler, not because it is bigger. Um, and so uh, it goes through this cycle and the important thing especially is that all of these cepheids are about the same luminosity as long as they have the same period. So you can't read along here, but this is the period of how long it takes to go through the cycle. And this relation was discovered by Henrietta Leavitt. And um, the, the longer it takes to go through the cycle, the brighter 
the star is on average in through its cycle. So if, uh, if a star that's really massive and bright, those are the ones that take a long time to go through the cycle. And the ones that are smaller, more compact, they go through quicker. And so that, that relationship was discovered by looking at many of the Cepheid variables. And um, this became very important because it allowed Hubble to uh, use Cepheids to determine the distances to galaxies, even the Andromeda galaxy. These are actual Hubble's uh, photographic plates where he's marking that there are uh, variable stars there and by measuring the brightness and the period he found that these had to be extraordinarily far away these could not be nearby they had to be far away and this showed that the Andromeda what they called the Andromeda Nebula was actually a galaxy and he could measure the distance to the Andromeda galaxy using this method of a period luminosity relationship of Henrietta Leavitt. Standard candles are another method. This is where you have some class of objects that have the same luminosity, and thus they can be used to determine distance. And an, an example is this Type 1a supernova, it exploding in the outskirts of this galaxy, and it's very bright. You can see that this is as bright as the nucleus of, the, of that same galaxy, but it's only one star, and this is billions of stars. But, so the advantage is these can be seen very far away whenever one of these happens. Remember, a type 1a supernova is a white dwarf that is collected material beyond the Chandrasekhar limit, and then it explodes, and they all explode at the same uh, mass. They all explode when they have 1.4 solar masses, so they're really like the same piece of dynamite. They're all the same kind of star that explodes uh, for the most part. There are variations, but those also can be taken into account. So the, this is what we mean by a standard candle. If I see one that is um, a million times fainter than this one, well, I know it's the square root of a million times farther away or a thousand times farther away. So Hubble's law is that the uh, more distant galaxies are moving, the, fa uh, the more distant they are away, the faster they're moving away from us. So this is a, a different result. This is that when we look at galaxies, we can take the spectrum. When we take a spectrum, we can see the Doppler shift. And that is that the spectral lines show that They've been redshifted or they've been blue shifted. And it turns out that as we, he looked at many, many galaxies, the uh, nearby ones were redshifted, but the far ones, which he could sort of tell because they looked like they were further away and they were fainter, they were um, moving faster away. And so if we have the distance and millions of light years here, and the velocity, he found this relation called Hubble's Law. For instance, 400 million light years away is something like 6,000 kilometers per second moving away. But if the object is much further than that, it is also moving away from us much further than that as well. A remarkable result, but one in which we can, if we have nothing else but the spectrum, we can find out how far the galaxies are if we know the uh, Hubble's law. So this is the uh, method by which we determine the cosmic distances. And it's a ladder because we have to work our way up by first finding distances in the inner solar system and then working our way out, all the way out to the distant universe. And uh, this has been done very successfully in uh, putting all this together. And so that is the Cosmic Distance Ladder.